Oh, thank God I've got Richard Quest with me in studio. Good morning. How are you doing on Captain the Morning? How are you? I'm very well, and it's exactly the sort of thing I could have done on any, <laughs> any given day. In that spur of the moment. Yeah. And you just think, is he or isn't he? Yeah. Is he or isn't he? Well, <laughs> anyway, yes, good morning to you. And absolutely thrilled. Uh, to be here, uh, even at this early ish hour. Exactly. Um, you, you've done morning radio. I have well, done not morning radio. I've done morning radio. I've done morning television. I did morning TV for years. Yeah. Breakfast shows uh, where, uh, you know, you, you get up at three in the morning. Yes. Uh, in fact, uh, once at CNN, I did a breakfast show that had to start the European time at five. And so I was up literally most of the night. Yeah. And it's really difficult. It is particularly... What time do you go to bed, by the way? By eight o'clock. Yeah, you On a good day. On a good day, yeah. On a good day. You like to get a good seven hours yes, in before you get I, up. I try. That was the same. <laughs> there are these youngsters who can sort of split sleep or go to bed at midnight, get up at two understand. and... I don't understand. No. I don't understand. Weird. I went out with a couple of friends over the weekend and I'm still recovering from it. Age. <laughs> it's called age. Good morning. A fun fact before we begin. Yes. Where you're sitting. Ooh. Well... Legendary Zane Vergy. Ah, right oh, I think her makeup's still. <laughs> <laughs> Zane, dear, wonderful, wonderful, good Zane friend, indeed, indeed, wonderful friend, indeed. excellent broadcaster, and a superb person. Absolutely, and we have. I can't. I can't. Uh, I couldn't even imagine Ooh. having having speechless. Richard Quest. Speechless. Speechless. Yes. And from my favorite uh, city. Well. In England, that is Liverpool. Ah, oh, I'm a I'm a Scouser. You are not. I am. Let's have the accent. Y N W. Well, I can't get it. I can't get. It. I really you got to be able to talk like that if you're going to do a South <laughs> accent. There you yes, go. Those of us who were born and brought up, there you, you go. You can turn it on at the drop of a hat. <laughs> No, I like to yes. My, the Liverpool sense of humour yes. and the Liverpool way of looking at life. Mm-hmm. Like, no, he's not like that always. No. It's just brilliant. And it, I, I, whenever I'm back in Liverpool, I was there last year just to, for, during the summer, and, mm-hmm. and there, there is a, an excitement and energy there, mm-hmm. despite everything that city has been through. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. be talking football a bit later yeah. on, but uh, just to kickstart, of course, born in Liverpool and went through production line, school, graduating from Leeds. And Vanderbilt University, and then 1985, yep. you joined BBC as a trainer. Now, you initially were to be a barrister. How did you end up uh, as a newscaster? I'd always enjoyed radio and broadcasting. I'd done hospital radio, these little radio stations that broadcast to patients. I'd done university radio. I'd done mm-hmm. BBC local radio. And time and again, I had thought, I really want to try my hand at broadcasting. Mm-hmm. My father, my late father, uh, he is dead, uh, my late father said... Um, <laughs> Look, fine, but you've got to get a career first in case it all goes wrong. And right. the career, I, and I'd have enjoyed law. I mm-hmm. really would have enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. There was nothing about it that I didn't like, particularly criminal law. Oh, you can't beat a good wow. case. Um, and I, but I wanted to be a, a broadcaster, and the BBC said, well, all right, we'll give you a traineeship. Mm-hmm. And so I started at the BBC, and I was there for 15 happy years. Wow. 15 very happy years as the Wall Street correspondent wow. based in New York. So wow. I was very lucky. You've revolutionized business news, business reporting, so much so that everyone wants to emulate your style, wants to be Richard Quest. How does that make you feel? Well, I think, it's a, I think that statement is a gross exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> the sort of thing one might experience from a morning radio <laughs> presenter. <laughs> uh, no, uh, no uh, look, it is great. It's a just, mm. uh, I don't necessarily accept that others are emulating, but there is a... An excitement. Mm -hmm. If you are going to be sitting in front of a microphone or in front of a camera, Mm -hmm. it is a privilege. Indeed. It is an honor. It is a privilege. And it is you are the servant of your viewer or listener. Mm -hmm. And as I I think too many people, and you'll agree with me on this, I think too many people in our business forget that. Absolutely. We think that we are what it's all about. No, it is not. We're not demigods. No. We are not what it's all about. What it's about is the viewer and the listener. Because, as a, as a, as a, as a mentor once said to me, never forget, Richard, mm-hmm. you are nothing more than a light in a box in the corner of the room that someone can switch off. And even now, there's somebody looking at the transistor radio thinking, mm, wow, do I want him or do I want that other guy or woman wow. or whatever? Yeah. Wow, that's uh, quite interesting. And just before Quest means business, whilst you're behind the desk on uh, World News, uh, do you have a favourite pairing? Because it seems like you had the perfect chemistry with uh, uh, Monita Rajpal. There was Monita. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am truly promiscuous. <laughs> 
So um, am I, by the way. Um, I am. There was Monita. I was with um, Halagarani. Yes. For a long time. And Becky Anderson. Indeed. Becky, dear Becky and I have done more shows together than most. Um, the boss once described watching Becky and myself together as like watching two large animals tussling in the mud. <laughs> um, but, I, you know, it was... Being when you're co anchoring mm-hmm. is a very special art because you're not you don't have to like the person you're anchoring with, although I do, mm-hmm. but you have to respect them and you have to do it. It's like ballroom dancing. If you and I wanted to suddenly do the uh, a ballroom dance, if I'm doing the waltz and you're doing the foxtrot, it's going to go wrong, absolutely. But if we're both in sync. And we both know she's going to read, I'm going to read. And we're not fighting over the interviews. I know you do it. Now you do it. Now you do it. Then you'll have a great bring. And I've loved anchoring with them all. Indeed. What's the fine line between uh, hosting on TV and on radio? Because uh, we've seen a lot of uh, people transition and sometimes it doesn't really work. Sometimes it works. We've seen Chris Evans jump from radio to TV. Uh, Not so much. That was a specific program that didn't work. (laughs) And and to be fair, you know, the whole Top Gear business. And I mean, remember, he did TV before. He did. He did. uh, Whatever. In. 20 years ago Indeed. but the Top Gear thing was somewhat unique mm-hmm. because it coming off the back of Clarkson and, and others no exactly. I think the real difference is intimacy mm-hmm. intimacy you know, when you're into radio you've got this rather nice well very good morning to you and yeah well yeah, oh you are looking nice this morning <laughs> so you've, you've got that intimacy exactly. with television you're broadcasting and there you are <laughs> ah I see a camera <laughs> now I think it's a mistake if you go too intimate and too like this. Exactly. And you get that balance. If you can get that balance right, you will succeed in both. What's your favourite? Between oh. radio and TV? Oh, you, 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 you can't say. Uh, they, they, <laughs> each have, they each have different... You know, I, I can be at home uh, listening to National Public Radio, NPR, or in Britain, listening to the BBC, and you think, this is magnificent. And then all of a sudden you want... <laughs> yeah. and, then, uh, and then next thing you know, you're wanting um, television because you want to see the pictures and feel it. Yeah. Both. Richard Quest in studio with us as we go into the news right now with the lovely Uni Amunga telling us exactly what is happening. My co-host for today, in fact, let me task him to read this oh, as no. we go into the top of the hour right there. So that one, just Which that line right there, that one. The one, that says, um, the one with the Emirates. Yes, yes, yes. All yes, right, yes. so at the top of the hour, there you go. It is. Oh, look, I look at that. Oh, well, a bit late, but never mind. Uh, it's seven o'clock this morning with Emirates. Fly business class and arrive fresh to experience all that Dubai has to offer.